I I heard some um, I heard some rumblings about if Fanuf hadn't gotten hurt, that probably they would have pulled off that deal with Richards for Fanuf. Somebody told me that the other day. I heard that too, and and now they're sending Richardson to the minors. Yep, he's gone already. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're sending a gazillion dollar player to the minors. Do you think that the Leafs are going to uh, follow suit and send Fanuf to the minors? Bizarre. No. Bizarre. No, they're not. No, they won't. I, I was, uh, buddy. I was being facetious. Yeah. I mean, I know, but Frank, you know why they they they, they knew that they could get Richard's contract through on waivers. And to extend Phil's rumor, and may or may not be true, as we all know, but they probably said to the Leafs, look, we're going to put him on waivers. If somebody claims him, you can make your enough deal with them. But if nobody does, we'll send him to Manchester. We'll pay his salary. When you're ready to trade us enough, you can take Richards. I've heard that they wanted more than Richards. Exactly. And uh, L.A. said, hey, hold it. You're giving us a stiff of $49 million, and we're giving you 22 back. You better call the accountant. <laughs> and I'll tell you something, and maybe you guys are all going to tell me. Sand timer. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now. I think Richards would do very well in Toronto. A change of scenery will do that guy good. I still believe in him. I still think he's a great hockey player. I think that he's just, uh, he needs to be focused. Unfortunately, he can't be focused where he is right now. Yeah. Well, I, I think, Frank, you got company. A lot of people like Richards, but... What they've seen of him in L.A. Uh, has kind of allayed their expectations. Calgary's willing to trade that Weidman for him. Oh, I'd take Fanuf ahead of Weidman, I'll tell you that. But it's the $49 million that's going to be the kicker. Yep. Well, you know, think about this, guys. Uh, we're talk about, let's talk about accountants. Uh, 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 let's put, uh, talk like we are accountants, and, we, and we're very successful accountants, and we drive brown Ferraris. Let's say uh, that <laughs> Fanoff is a very big uh, expense for the Toronto Maple Leafs, correct? Uh, <laughs> excuse me, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. I just let me pick up my eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's in your suit, Frank. <laughs> I have no I have no cop uh, cough, cough button here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, Phaneuf is a very large uh, expense for the Toronto Maple Leafs and, oh. and a huge liability on the balance sheet. I'm saying I would gamble uh, uh, as a Toronto Maple Leaf manager, general manager, if I was uh, the great Shanahan, and I would uh, gamble and, and get rid of uh, Phaneuf for Richards. And, and, and I think that's a, a plausible uh, play. And, and I think L.A. just has shown their disdain for Richards' play. I mean, they're taking... Their number one expense, uh, a guy they put a lot of uh, their dreams and, and aspirations into, and they're sending him to the minors. And they had a chance at the end of last season to buy him out. They chose not to. That's right. Well, you, they, you know they chose not to? It's like the guy who, who keeps gambling. He loses uh, the first ten, and then he's not going to get up from the fucking table because he believes the next card, the next card, the next card. And I believe they've been gambling on him because if you take a look at Richards, he's one of the most talented players in the NHL. Big guy, very talented. He just, you know, for, I don't know uh, for a fact, but the allegation is that he likes to live la dolce vita, and 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 that throws him off his concentration. I heard the same thing, Frankie. The story yeah. was that he came, he was out of shape last year, and they told him. In the off season, get yourself into shape, and it was basically they rolled the dice, like you said, Frank, that he was going to come in there and be in shape, rather than just saying, "I know you've been." A they believe they, they believe the guy's the real deal, and he is the real deal. And you know what the fucking problem is in this world? It, it always takes one person to motivate, and they haven't been able to bring that out in him. He had some great years in LA, and now he's just he's just like gone into this lull, and it's like you don't give a shit, and he's getting paid, and whatever. And and you know his pride is not measured by his ability to play. His pride's measured by how much uh, disdain he's creating between his his person and and the LA uh, management. So LA said enough is a fuck enough. So they sent him to the minors. You know, and and for a team to do that, I think that's sending a clear message to you. Yeah, they they've like sent the message mentioned. there, and they needed to get they get um, some sort of cap space and stuff like that, and, but they, they did not. It, does, it, does, Phil, it doesn't work that way anymore. No, I, made the same I know. Mistake. You, you, can't, 
You send him the minor, you still got the cap still space. Got but, the cap you, you know, Richards is an interesting story because he signed a 12-year deal. Unbelievable. He was the next Bobby Clark. Yep. He was going to do this. He was a wonderful leader from Kitchener. I mean, this kid had all the credentials. And then he and Jeff Carter got places downtown in Philly. And yeah. the story started about their Dolce Vita. And some of them were true. Some of them weren't quite as true. But there were enough of them that they traded them. So you know that Mike Richards' deterioration as a hockey player started in downtown Philly. That's right. That's what they say. Exactly. Everything you said is exactly verbatim, verbatimly true. And the thing is that that there was rumor like that in Ottawa with Spezza and uh, Heatley and uh, the goalie. What was the goalie's name? No idea. Ray, Ray Emery. Ray Emery. So there was a lot of rumor that uh, that that they were uh, they joined the Dolce Vita club, right? And they broke that apart. And it's and, you know and, and and motivation, a positive motivation. And you guys know, so you know, it's easy to be lazy. Oh yeah. It's easy to be fat. It's easy to make mistakes. Oh yeah. Very fucking oh. easy to be a turd. It's hard to be a good person.